Hello everyone, it's Mary. Welcome back to the channel where I am bringing you a big reminder that you can have fun with foil without a laminator. So here on my channel, I have a few videos that go over some techniques, some hacks on how to use foil with your heat gun or other tools that are not laminators, also with adhesive. So check those out, I'll link them below and in the end of this video you'll see them. But I wanna take this opportunity to remind you again that we can have fun without a laminator. So that's the technique I'm gonna be showing us today uh, on this video. All right, so the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is you're going to pick an image and you're going to stamp it in clear, sticky embossing ink. Okay, it's so because we're gonna do some heat embossing here. Now, I chose this Boo uh, sentiment here. It's a very solid uh, image, and so I wanna make sure that I uh, kind of condition it with my fingers, and just to make sure that it's ready to go, I'm gonna stamp it with the ink, and then I'm going to, I think, do that twice, I think. No, maybe not. All right, this, my, my uh, Distress Embossing ink is pretty juicy. Then I'm gonna pour clear embossing powder over it. I'm going to continue on and I'm going to get ready to heat set it. Now I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about the heat tool I'm using today. So this one is new to me. It's called the Diafield Mini Heat Gun. It has a two temperature setting and it goes from 302 degrees Fahrenheit to 842 degrees Fahrenheit fast. Now I will tell you, I like it a lot. Um, I find it the price to be extremely affordable, which is great. If you're just starting out, this is a dual setting mini heat gun. And for heat embossing, I think it's perfect for it. You don't need anything big and fancy. And right now it's um, even on sale. So it's even cheaper than normal. <laughs> so if you're in the market for a heat tool, this is a good one. I actually kept this in real time in the video so you can see how fast it heats up. Now, a couple things, whatever heat tool you use, be sure to heat it, uh, preheat it before you put it to your cardstock. You want something, the reason why I like the dual settings is because I always go for the hotter setting because I like something that's going to not warp my paper. And the hotter it is, the faster it melts the embossing, the less heat is on it for a long period of time. So. Tip one, heat it off to the side, be careful with it, make sure it's not touching anything, um, and just always safety in mind. And uh, use the hotter heat setting, I think, try, give that a go. I really, really enjoy doing that because of the lack of warping I get. All right, so I kept that again in real time for you to kind of see how that heats up the embossing powder. So once I have that done, now I have my, you let it cool a little bit, now I have my images already set in their embossing powder. I'm gonna take out my foil because that's what we're doing today. We're having fun with foil. And I like to cut my foil with a paper trimmer that has a glider. I find that um, this is so much easier and it doesn't get caught up on scissors. I don't know if you do that as well, but they, they make a special cutting tool for um, foil, but if you have something like I'm showing in the camera here, that's perfectly fine. Um, but they do make that, just FYI. Okay, so I am now going to reheat my images. I'm remelting the powder so that I can then put the foil. This is the first way to do this. I'm gonna show you the kind of the pros and cons, if you will. Now, this is a very solid image, so you wanna be careful when you're pressing down. Of course, you see my little rubber finger thing. I got that from the Dollar Tree. Um, but you want to be careful so you don't burn yourself. When you're doing this with solid images, they tend to um, kind of melt. Melt's not a good word. Um, blend? Um, I, what's the word I'm looking for? It kind of like spreads it out a little bit. So you have to be careful. If you're using like an outline image, it's less noticeable. But with solid images, it's a little bit more noticeable. So I'm going back. I'm heating the paper, putting the foil over. So you can see me do this. Now, I'm getting cool, abstracty look on this, and that's cool. However, this is probably the better technique. Put your foil down, heat set over it, and then press a little bit gently over the image with your finger, and or a towel or something. Just don't do your bare finger, you'll probably burn yourself. Um, and then you're gonna get a little bit more of a one-time uh, look, it's almost like you don't have to go back and forth as much as I did in the first technique. But like always, as I always recommend, experiment. 
have fun. Um, enjoy the process. Nothing here is going to be perfect, especially when you're doing like this without a laminator. But look how fun that is. This is like for this particular type of image too, the boo. It's really, really fun. It's like abstract and yeah, it just kind of looks, it looks cool. So I am again doing the same technique as I did on the second one and I'm just speeding it up a little bit for us since we already saw me do it um, but that's two ways now in the other videos I have a hack foiling video I show you multiple ways to get your foil on your cardstock this video is just showing you reheating the embossing powder with the heat tool and then pressing down with the foil okay so I'm just gonna go over this one more time you uh, sticky heat uh, excuse me sticky stamp your image Pour the clear embossing powder over it and then heat set it first. You don't want to put your foil right down on the powder because that is really going to mess up your image. You want to make sure it's locked in there first. So heat set it first and that's what I'm doing right now with this Diafield mini heat gun. And once we get that done, we're going to go back to the second technique I showed you of reheating it and putting on the foil on top. Right, again, I kept that in real time. Look, you can't even see the heat tool in the picture either, so it looks like it's just magically disappearing. I didn't even plan that. This is a Halloween card. Okay, very focus. Now I'm going to go back and do the same exact thing. All right, so this one, trick or treat, doesn't it didn't come out as great. I'm going to be kind of real honest with you on that one. I lost a little bit of the word imaging. So when you have thinner words. I actually think it works out better, like thinner font. I think it works out better. I decided not to keep the black card stock the way it was. And I went and I fussy cut all my boos out because I'm going to put them on to this really super fun pattern paper here. I decided to pull out some white embossing or excuse me, white distress ink. And I am going to just give it a little cloudy look because you know, it's Halloween. And I love the eyeballs on this pattern paper. It's so cute. So I cut it down too, by the way. Um, it's a quarter of an inch shorter than, smaller than an A2 size. I'm going to put down my boo. Now the middle boo I laid flat. And that's so that I can do my sentiment right across the center. This card was really easy to do and very simple. But I did want to add a little pop of Halloween color. So I pulled out this piece of orange cardstock. Um, this one is from a scrapbook.com paper pad. And I am going to then use white embossing powder. And this is super fine white embossing powder, but I'm doing the same technique. I'm just heat setting it. And I, honestly, even though I used the heat tool prior to this about six minutes, I still like to preheat it. Um, I don't know, I just really don't wanna warp my cardstock. I'm gonna take out my paper trimmer. I'm gonna cut this down. Now I'm gonna just do a strip across the front of my card panel. And I'm just gonna use some Artiste liquid glue and I'm going to be placing that down onto the uh, cardstock right here. So we're going to go right across the middle. Now, because I had cut down that pattern paper, I needed to place the orange right in the center um, and not on the ends because then it, the, the ghostly greetings would have been off center. I hope that makes sense. I'm going to place some more Artiste glue on the back of this uh, card stock here. And look how fun the back of that card stock is with the skeletons. It's a really cute paper pad. It's called Spooky. So you can check that out too if you're uh, looking for some Halloween card stock. It's not too much. I've been known to buy too much in the past and this is like the perfect amount. So then I get that down. My card is finished. This card was fun. I hope that this was a great reminder to use your heat tool and have some fun with foiling. And again, I'll list those videos at the end of this video and in the description box below. So if you want to go on a little bit more of a deep dive on some foiling and some hacks, you can check those out. I will list everything I use below in the description box below this video. I will see you in the comments down below and in the next video. Bye-bye.